build your city. You know, it's simple as that. Build your city. You're going to try out, uh, as you can see, a lot of uh, very experienced people on the stage here uh, who have done various other things. If you're going to do something for the city, I would like to um, say how did we go about, in, a, in I was told I was have like 10 minutes, so how did we go about and a uh, few experiences that you can take from us. Yeah, uh, I, 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 It's almost like some, I have a different take on all these issues. Yeah. I do believe in personal responsibility, morality, ethics, of course. I mean, you've got to be a real fool to say those things don't matter. But what I want to point out is that systems matter. And I, want to, uh, I was kind of worried that uh, Chetan Bhagat, when he started talking about Hong Kong, I thought he'll say everything that I had to say and I'll have nothing to say. I'm a big fan of Hong Kong right, for many, many years. And the reason why is that Hong Kong used to be a piece of rock with no fresh water. And one of the reasons why Hong Kong is Hong Kong today, one of the richest places on earth, and uh, 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 rule of law is number one, is because they have economic freedom. It takes few hours to get a license to do a business in Hong Kong. It will be very interesting for some of the young people to study and see how much time does it take to get a license in India to do a job. So the reason, again, I'm, I wouldn't have brought up these topics, I'm only bringing it up because of the questions that came up, corruption. We are a nation obsessed with corruption. And we immediately jump into the idea that we are all corrupt, we are all bad, uh, we are horrible human beings, blah, blah, blah. I would argue that we are not, we are just people. Every country has good people, bad people, some people, good people who behave badly, bad people who behave goodly, whatever, yeah? It's the systems that matters. And again, let me digress just a little bit before I get into my actual presentation. Ask yourself, uh, ask yourself why is it that we people in our cities are so frustrated? And when we say that, you know, oh, Indian goes to Singapore, he behaves uh, well. Yeah, typical. I can, I can almost anticipate this question. Every seminar we hear this question. I have a different take again on this thing. See, uh, the, 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 uh, the statement when somebody makes you, oh, this guy goes to Singapore, he is uh, behaving. What does that uh, statement mean? Because he has such low self-esteem and self-respect that you are going to go to a white man or a yellow man or a brown man's country, you you know, subserviently obeying all his laws. I have a different take. What I want to argue is that even though I'm a foreigner in those countries, even though they never knew I'm going to be there, they have created systems for me. And let me, be, be, I'll let, let me go a little bit further and show you. Okay, uh, can you get the thing on? Okay, look at this. Uh, this is one part of Chennai. Yeah. Now ask yourself. Look at the. Look at the. Uh, look at. If you look at this picture, depending on who you are, your personality, etc., etc., you will have a million different opinion about this simple picture. Now, let me explain public policy to you using this picture. You know, you, let me tell you why this is uh, such a mess. And before that, I am very proud that we directly or indirectly elect our Prime Minister. I am very, very proud that we directly or indirectly elect our uh, Chief Minister. But here is my argument. 99% of the people, 99% of your problem is not defense policy, it's not foreign policy, it is not a Lokpal bill in Delhi, or etc, etc. It's not, you don't worry lying in bed, uh, you know, where is our embassy going to be in Timbuktu? Do you? What is our, uh, you know, relation, defense relationship with Bhutan? We don't worry about those things, but we do. Why? Because we are not able to solve any of this problem. We are obsessed with uh, NDTV, uh, you know, Barkha Dutt's interview. Why? because we are not able to deal with this. And why is it that? Because for the last 60 odd years, or even more, if you look at Queen Victoria, etc., etc., we've been an upside down country. We've been an upside down democracy. We have tremendous potential and democracy and so on to elect central government and state government. But when it comes to most of our problem, which is what? Mosquito, dog, uh, toilet, tree, road, flooding. I think the lights are really bright. And so on and so forth. We have, uh, it, it's all local. And our city government, as most of the speakers said here, has no power, has no money. And look at the structure of our country. Most of the money, and I completely agree with Chetan, yeah, that is cities are a wealth generator. 
towns are wealth generator. Even little villages generate wealth. But the wealth actually is collect, taken away to, uh, through taxation, etc., to a central location, Delhi, or let's say a state capital. And then what do we do? We are very, very proud that Delhi is going to give us two rupees to buy bus. You know, they say, uh, here, uh, three rupees to build your toilet, five rupees to build a road. The question I have to ask is that we are a 5,000-year-old civilization. Every corner of our uh, country is a 5,000-year-old civilization. Do you really need a central government or a state government to tell us that we need a toilet or a, we need a footpath or a, we need a bus? We proudly put logos on our buses saying that Delhi gave us money to buy this bus. So my problem is, it's not as simple. The problem is complicated. Okay? So I'm not trying to discourage anybody because my uh, presentation is actually quite optimistic. Point is, it's more complicated than we imagine. Let's just quickly look at this thing. Look at this guy. If you're a middle class person, you'll say, this guy needs to be evicted. He's an encroacher after all, yeah? Now let me ask you this question. Do, do you see this uh, in the back? Do you know what this is? It's supposed to be a garden. Now, why do you think that garden was built here? It's because the corporation doesn't want you to pee here. See, he, there is a tree policy, there is a hawker policy, there's a peeing policy. You have to have. I mean, it sounds funny. But why is Hong Kong Hong Kong? Because they have a peeing policy somewhere. I mean, it's not called peeing policy, obviously, but it's a public toilet policy. Or, you know, so if you, if you talk about public toilet here, then the question is, NGSR sewage, uh, sewage connection, if you open it into the drain, it'll, yeah, so on and so forth. Look at the tree, yeah? I can tell you that there are very, very few people in the city who can actually tell you what is the right tree to plant where, and I'm sure Exnora is one of them. So in this simple picture, if, you, if I, can, I can spend an entire seminar ex picking apart this picture. There is a median there, yeah? Now it's a typical thing in every seminar I hear. Uh, or when you, when you gather together, you say, you'll see some old lady jumping across this uh, median. What do we tell when we're going in our cars? What do we say? Look at that illiterate lady, you know? Are you well? Look at us, we have uncultured people. Is, it, is that the reason why that old lady jumps across the median? It's because you build a median which has no connection to the road, no engineering, no planning, nothing. You build a two kilometer median and in this hot, dying weather, you expect that old lady to walk, what, two kilometers to cross the road? And we say, sir, Namurla, we don't know, we need pub, you know, uh, awareness for how to walk on a footpath. I always joke, I always say that I have been to Singapore many times. Not once has Lee Kwan called me and said, Raj, come here. Go attend a two weeks conference and workshop on footpath walking. Never. I've been to Singapore. How come? Uh, did they like recognize that I'm somehow footpath aware guy? No. They've given me footpath. And you may say, sir, uh, even if you give a footpath, Indians will misbehave. You know what they have? They have cameras. They're plainclothes policemen. That's part of the system. So you can be illiterate from Nagargoel going there to do a menial labor. You can be IT guy from Chennai going there to do wonderful hi-fi job or whatever. They have given you infrastructure. And then they're saying, look, we're giving you everything. If you misbehave, please come with us. You have a better place. We'll put you some better place. Yeah? My point is, we, when systems fall apart, we end up blaming ourselves. He's a fool, this guy's a moron, whole country is full of uncultured people, we have no civilization. I hate that. I absolutely hate it because I, all the people I know are self-respecting people. All the people are good people. So my argument is that improve the system, and when I say system, I don't mean just concrete and uh, steel. I'm talking about a system checks and balances, you know, uh, carrot, stick, etc., etc. And this is why Hong Kong is Hong Kong, this is why Singapore is Singapore, and so on. So I'll move on. Now I want to dazzle you with some color pictures. Yeah? I'll get to the punchline slowly. Uh, this is uh, Guangzhou, China. Uh, once we showed it to a huge gathering of very, very powerful secretaries, etc., etc., and I pointed out, sir, uh, look at this, uh, this is like Anna Salai. Actually, one of the top bureaucrats said, no, 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 this is actually smaller than Anna Salai. Point is, if the Chinese in Guangzhou can do this, why can't we? Yeah? Simple question. Look at this. Fast moving traffic, slow moving traffic, and I'll show you the footpath on the side. Look at it. It's the same, same uh, road, okay, by the way. Uh, huge footpath. 
So if you go ask, tell somebody on the road, sir, uh, why don't we give footpath to our people? Say, see, there's no space. You're not a one or you don't have place to drive a car. You know, you're talking about big footpath, yeah? But it's because they did all the other things, this is happening. Look at the tree gratings, yeah? It doesn't, I'm sure if you have a regular architect, it doesn't take much to do this. But most people, this is surprising. How come? A wheelchair can go on top of it. So you don't need special, uh, you know, MTC buys 10 buses for handicapped people in the city. Are they supposed to wait the rest of the day, waiting for this one in, uh, one in a million bus to come and pick them up? They have given facility for everybody. Yeah, okay. Um, now, somebody brought up the issue of, uh, you know, uh, potholes in Mumbai. And uh, Chitan brought up the issue of potholes in Mumbai. And potholes are very familiar to us. But this is why Chinese don't have potholes. Stormwater drains. Unless you're stormwater, you, you can have the best and the least corrupt contractor doing your best roads. But unless all this is integrated, you pour water here, for example. Let's flood this place for a few, a few hours. Drive a bunch of cars up and down. You will have potholes here. So my point is, let's assume that our country has no corruption. Here's my challenge to all the people who talk about corruption. Let's say tomorrow corruption disappears in this country. Yeah? I guarantee you that there will be very little change in our quality of life. Corruption is not good. I'm not justifying corruption at all. Okay. My point is, corruption is a byproduct of a lot of other bad things in society. It's, it's like sneezing. You can't cure the sneeze. There's a disease that needs to be cured, not the sneeze. So I think, yes, we need to fight corruption, but then we need to think through this problem. So look at the aesthetics. Everybody loves to talk about aesthetics. We may be a poor country, we may be a rich country. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, I'll hurry quickly. Uh, aesthetics, etc., etc. I'll go through it very fast. The idea is that you know, if the Chinese can give crossing at the right place, why can't we? Uh, kiosk. You saw the uh, street hawker there. This is, I think, New York City. You know, they have. They also have street hawkers. How come he has a nice looking uh, shed? So one of the things I used to tell my friends, uh, architect friends, is when we were doing some work in uh, Tinagar, why can't our hawker stalls look like Kanjiburam saris? I mean, imagine millions of visitors going to uh, Tinagar just to see the hawker stall. Forget nullies, forget all the silk sari and all. Just to see the hawker stall. Let's, let, why, do, why can't we do that? Policies, of course, public toilets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this is very interesting. Um, if you look at this Hong Kong, what you see is a fancy car zooming by. But look at this. Look at the size of the street. Look at the railings they're given and all that. Yeah. Um, I'll hurry through all these color pictures. Now, the first thing they'll say is that this cannot be done. So if a young person or young at heart is trying to do this, this is one of my advice. One of the reasons City Connect and I'm sure uh, people like Mr. Nirmal and others have been able to do something is because you got to know the problem in and out. And I always joke we need color pictures because the biggest problem you will encounter in your in build your city is this. But interestingly, you can overcome it by doing this. This is Ahmedabad. This could be very well be our uh, anywhere in our city. They uh, our partner by the way, ITDP had this competition in Ahmedabad, and we're going to have this in Chennai. It's just to make force people to think different. So instead of talking about public transportation, let's ask ourselves, why not a BRT, why not a cycle track? Uh, could be any flyover in Chennai. Why can't it be like this? Yeah, People can walk, colorful, nice, everything. Uh, this is Ananagar. This is, by the way, part of our uh, work we did with the corporation to build the cycle tracks. Uh, it's an ongoing thing. Why can't it be like this? There's plenty of space for cars, plenty of space for walking. Again, uh, Ananagar can be done. Now here's the punchline. Yeah? You may say, okay, it's all nice. I mean, people are showing, anybody can bring color pictures. Interestingly, we are actually helping as we speak, uh, Chennai Corporation about, we are fixing about 60 roads to the standards that I just showed you. That's my punchline, by the way. Yeah? I'm not making this up. Okay, this is actually serious. As some other people in my friends in the audience are actually on the road helping corporation uh, design. Sir, This is the reality. That that level we need to work for us to build our city. Uh, there's more to it. 
new part of Chennai. Remember, Chennai has become pretty more than double. Uh, this is actually smaller roads in Chennai in the outskirts because the complaint is always we, the people of say, South Chennai, get everything. Actually, corporation has taken 172 kilometers based on the standards we're given. They are actually upgrading it, and something unbelievable is happening. Highways have taken up Anasalai, Inner Ring Road, and uh, Punamali High Road, and a road from um, GST all the way to Velacheri. As we speak, the consultants are working on completely redoing the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the streets. So uh, these are some of the other things, projects we are working on. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, this is a BRT project. So the question is, we can't do BRT in Chennai. But look at this. Uh, the, the previous road I showed you was Mukaper. This is Quito very much doable. Uh, we work with the metro rail, for example. Uh, so the idea is that you have a BRT station, you have a metro station, can people get off the elevator, I mean, sorry, escalator, go directly into metro, and so on. Amazingly, all these color pictures matter. Today, metro, uh, metro's credit goes to metro. We are just catalyzing it. But the point is, metro is actually taking these ideas. Idea of a two kilometer radius, people need to be able to walk to the station, five kilometer radius to do feeder system. So our metro, I'm telling you, is doing some of the very cutting edge stuff in the city. And I'm very proud to say organization like City Connect, ITDPs have been part of that uh, uh, help. Yeah? So these are all live projects. Well, interestingly, today in the paper, you must have read about the Palikarnai restoration project. And I must say, uh, uh, we have played a small part along with a very important organization called Care Earth. And I'll show you, that's just a color picture again. I'll explain this thing. This is the current garbage dump. Uh, here is what we are saying the garbage dump could become. Now, again, you may say, oh, this is just a color picture. But what behind this one color picture is a person or a group called Kairath. They've done years and years and years worth of studying of Palikarne. And we have so much color pictures, data, research, and so on and so forth. It's almost overwhelming. And I think the government found it so uh, the, we give entire plan, basically. You know, instead of simply saying, fix Palikarne, we have given them like detailed plan of what the Palikarne uh, garbage dump can be, where should be the cuts be so that the waters flow through, and so on and so forth. So my point is, behind each of these color pictures, there's a lot of hardworking people from various other organizations. That brings me uh, to the, my last few points. One, when we, the, the question becomes, instead of, what do, you, what do you do? Where do you start? Yeah? So I would suggest, in a nutshell, our philosophy would be quality of life for rich and poor. But how do you go about it? For example, in our case, what we did was, this is OMR data. Yeah? About 26% of the passengers travel in, uh, uh, the, I'm sorry, um, cars, occupy, cars and bikes occupy 64% of the road. Whereas, uh, you know, uh, the number of people traveling is only 26%. Look at this. So uh, Nandini brought up the issue of public transportation. How can you argue with this picture? 150 people can go in a vestibule bus, 150 people can go uh, in three regular buses, 150 people can go in 150 cars. So point is, uh, to the advice to the young people is, try to develop a philosophy. You know, what is it that you're trying to do for the city? Are, are, you, are you trying to, you just, don't, just don't say public transportation. Why, how? Why does it matter? Why should I get out of my car? I mean, these are the arguments you let it deal with when you're going to overcome uh, skepticism. The other thing I, I would say as a personal experience, and I'm sure I can speak for my colleagues, like uh, I think Mr. Nirmal is a prime example of this. You can't do it alone. It's one of his amazing power is to bring other people in. I'm sure he didn't go around the entire Tamil Nadu and go around building Exonora himself. Point is bringing, I think people like him are amazing role models. What I would say is that these are all the different kinds of people we work with, and it's very difficult. You know, it's very difficult hum dealing with human beings. I'm sure I irritate them. I'm sure they all irritate me. But that's how it can be done. No amount of thinking you can do it yourself is going to work. It, it has to be a teamwork. And all the color pictures I showed you, none of them I made it. It's all architects who are in this audience who are out there. There is plenty of resources in the city. Leverage it. You know? Uh, so, for example, I'll, uh, we work with all these departments. I mean, we complain so much about bureaucracy and how difficult it is. And I'm not making it sound rosy, by the way. Yeah? But amazingly, we have nothing but terrific response from all these organizations. These are some of the other projects we're working on. For example, uh, traffic integrated traffic center. So I joke that next time you cut red light and you get a ticket, we probably have something to do with it. You know? 
uh, there's a, uh, the government is accepting this idea of parking management, that parking is a commodity. You cannot simply give it away for free. It's, you can buy an 8 lakh rupee car, 80 lakh rupee car. You can't expect uh, you know, some, uh, a city to give you free parking. So again I joke, next time you have to pay higher parking, uh, you can blame us for that. So we have a bunch of other things going on. Uh, I'll, I, that's it. You know, I just wanted to tell you what we do. And um, the final advice is just do it. Let's not talk too much. Just, just do it.